Cheers and salutations. Welcome one and all to Americans Learn. And today, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to combine two things that should not go together at all. And listen, folks, don't ever do it. Water and electricity. In regards to toxic couples, that's one couple that should not be together. And uh, human beings should avoid that combination at any and all costs. So before we enjoy our video that we're going to check out called Why the U.S. Army Electrifies This Water. Oh boy. Maybe there's a giant monster or a UFO at the bottom of the water. Who knows? It, it's, it's 2023 after all. And let's face it, uh, Congress did have a hearing about how UFOs are maybe real. We'll let you decide on that one. But uh, yes, this video is called Why the U.S. Army Electrifies This Water, and it's by Tom Scott. Now, for all the videos that we check out here on this channel, we do encourage everyone to please support the original content creators. The link to this video, the original link, is in the description box below, so please check it out. And also be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and hit that ring bell notification. That way, all of you are made aware when we upload new content upon our YouTube channel. So, without further ado, why don't you grab yourself a tasty snack and a tasty beverage, and let's get ready to enjoy this video in a three, a two, a one. To be a quick and easy solution. Oops. I just realized 16 seconds in. Let's get started. In the mid 20th century, across the United States, wastewater plants and other ponds started to import a few species of fish, mainly bighead carp and silver carp. Mm. Those are fish that are particularly good at consuming algae blooms and other pests. And as with many things from the mid 20th century, what was meant to be a quick and easy solution turned into an ecological nightmare because, of course, the carp escaped into the wild during floods. Of course, they outconsumed and outcompeted all the local species. Oh, and of course, no. they have no natural predators. So in part- And let me go ahead and fix this up here real quick. Oh, there you go. <laughs> the Mississippi and Illinois rivers, like here in Peoria, those carp make up 95% of the entire fish biomass. The oh, I remember this. Oh, this was like, I think sometime even before I joined the Marine Corps, there was a big crisis with these uh, carp, and uh, people really didn't know what to do. Now, um, obviously, uh, living in Chicago, you, you would think this, this would not impact us, but no, it, it does, because Lake Michigan is a, a lot, has a large ecosystem in it, and uh, let's face it, us humans have done an A-plus job in destroying it. And uh, a lot of people uh, have been impacted by it. And uh, with these foreign invasive species, they can disrupt the entire ecosystem. I mean, we have a whole situation, I believe, with zebra mussels still impacting our pipelines, our water pipelines here in Chicago, but all the neighboring communities that use Lake Michigan as a fresh water source. The ecosystem that was here has basically been destroyed and replaced by carp. Oh. They can weigh more than 30 kilos and they are easily startled. They will jump out of the water at the slightest disturbance. If you go past a school of them in a boat like this, well, you can see what's happening. If one of those hits you in the head, it could do serious damage. Loads of YouTube channels have already talked about these carp-filled rivers because it's a big visual story and a great demonstration of human intervention causes harm. But the big problem right now is where these fish could end up next. And hopefully by the time I get there, the weather will have got a bit better. Ah, yes. Yes, that's right. Ah, hey, we're, we're in my neck of the woods. There's Chicago right there. And if you just go a little bit further uh, east, there's a place that my family and I, we used to visit a lot. Uh, my grandpa owned farmland out there. It's in Michigan City, Indiana. I had a lot of good memories there. Uh, I would, I'm proud to say that Indiana is my second home state. And, uh, oh my goodness, now I'm feeling all nostalgic. I had some good times. There was, uh, especially for those of you who don't know, uh, Michigan City, Indiana, there's this wonderful beach there. Um, however, there are no lifeguards at some portions of the beach. But uh, there's this area where there's a lighthouse. And me and my cousins, I, I, would, I would not do it now. And I would never have any young kids do this. But, hey, I, when I was a kid, I was stupid. Uh, we would go crayfishing by the rocks. Not, that wasn't safe. That, that was very stupid of us to do that. But we caught a lot of crayfish back in the day. But it was very stupid what we were doing. Very stupid. Hindsight is 2020 now. 
The Great Lakes of North America have a $7 billion fishing industry and a $16 billion recreational boating industry. If those carp reach the lakes, it would be another ecological disaster. Oh boy. And the lakes are connected to the Illinois River and the carp in one place, the canals of Chicago. This here is the choke point, the Chicago Sanitary and Ship Canal. The fish would have to come through here which is why this water is electrified. The US Army Corps of Engineers have put a giant electric fence underwater. We have chosen this point very strategically so that there's no way for invasive carp to get around this one particular point and get past. They're gonna get past. <gasps> I think I know where that is. No, 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 never mind, never mind. Disregard, it looked familiar, but it's not. Past the barrier into the Great Lakes. This is also a man-made canal, so it's a very standard shape. And we have the electric bars that bring the electricity into the water, sitting nearly on the bottom, 21 feet below the surface. The barriers are designed to send DC electric current into the water. It's pulsed into the water very fast uh, to create a voltage gradient in the water, like a speed hump that you would see on a road. For barrier 2A and 2B, it's 2.3 volts per inch at the surface. And at barrier one, uh, we're aiming for something around 6.0 volts per inch. And it creates this barrier of electricity. The actual rooms. It's, it looks pretty ingenious, but um, I'm just going to say life finds a way. Life always finds a way. And yes, it's a cop out, you know, bringing up the Jurassic Park line. But no, seriously, life always finds a way. There's no way that that's going to last forever. With the pulses, the things that send the electricity into the water, are off limits behind blast proof doors. I can show you photos, but I can't go in because banks of capacitors that can store and release enough energy to electrify all this water 34 times a second are extremely dangerous. On yeah. certain days, you can actually see fish swimming upstream and then they'll turn around and come back. If a fish is brave enough or gets pushed far enough into that voltage gradient, it will stun them and then they would just float back downstream and they'll wake up somewhere and not understand why they got there. We have fish biologists for making sure that the barrier works. They go out, they capture fish, they tag them, and then they release them below the barrier. The fish do not get past the barrier. We do know that uh, the 2.3 volts per inch is not as effective against little fish. The main population of the invasive carp has reached about 70 kilometers away from here, and over the last few years, it hasn't seemed to move any closer, which is a good sign, but it doesn't stop individual fish from making the journey. They've been found much closer, even occasionally on the wrong side of the barrier, and all it would take is a few to make it through. And suddenly, the Great Lakes have, have carp. carp. When the barrier had to be shut down for maintenance in 2009, toxin was added to 10 kilometers of this canal to kill everything in it, just in case. The amount of voltage that we have to send into the water to keep the barrier operating goes up dramatically when a barge comes through. We've noticed with some of the smallest fish actually do tend to go through the barrier when a barge is going by because of that voltage sag. So we do know that, it's a, that is one weakness of the barrier. Barges are built with what's called a rake on the front. That's the angled portion of the barge they put it sometimes in between two barges. And so there's a water space in there and they found that under certain circumstances, small fish could stay in that portion of water for, for many miles traveling up a river. And so there's the concern that a barge could take a small fish and make it through the barrier. The Navy dive team came out here and did a study on the electricity in the water and what that might do to a person. And the conclusion of that study was that there was a greater than 50% chance that someone in the water would experience cardiac arrest and would die. Electricity is nothing to screw around with. I just want to point this out here to anyone because I, it's a little bit off topic, but I just recently saw this video and um, I got so furious at it. Uh, in Chicago, we have a thing called uh, the L train. And, you know, these are our elevated trains. Uh, where, you know, we, we, we go all, all across the city. But there's this thing called the third rail. And there is a massive, and I mean massive, amount of electricity that goes through it. Play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. I saw this video on social media, and it really infuriates me. Um, apparently, Lollapalooza was a few weeks ago, and... 
three dumb teenagers or either that uh, look like college students. Yeah, probably college students. Um, had the big brain idea of sitting on the train tracks with the third rail right behind him. One of the kids fell backwards and got shocked and dragged his friend uh, with him. And they were both getting electric uh, uh, electrified. Uh, their third friend uh, tried to pull them off, but even he was getting electrocuted. So the one guy gets pulled off, but he was suffering from cardiac arrest. And the third girl was underneath the third rail. Or the second girl was under the second person was underneath the third rail, and um, l l let me just say, uh, thankfully paramedics got there in time. However, uh, the long term effects are unknown. Don't screw around electricity. All right, going into cardiac arrest is no joke. Messing around with electricity is no joke. Um, <clears throat> and if any of you ever visit Illinois, don't get the big brain idea of swimming in that water uh, with the shipping canal. Obviously, uh, I know all of you are smart. So I'm trusting you to do the right thing. But also, if you're ever in Chicago, don't play around with the third rail. There's also a legend, and I can't prove it or not because it sounds too stupid to be real. But knowing people, they probably was or could have happened in some capacity. But I heard this story as a kid. Apparently, some dude who was very, 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 very drunk uh, decided to uh, drain the old lizard. Uh and accidentally urinated on the third rail, and electricity bolted him in the chest. Don't mess around with electricity, folks, okay? Just leave it alone. I'm just saying, leave it alone. The Coast Guard has established special rules for this area. There can be no personal watercraft, so no jet skis. Good. Uh, no canoes, no kayaks that can go through. All barges passing through this area are required to use steel cables as well, so that the potential between barges stays the same. And many times barges like to have people out on the bow or out on deck doing things. They're required all to be inside in the boat while they're traversing the barrier. Yeah, the birds are totally fine. It's like birds standing on an electrical wire. They gather around and they see these fish kind of gathering a barrier area and they swoop in and get them. One of the reasons that we have multiple barriers is that they do require maintenance. And so when we have a requirement to maintain a piece of equipment, we mm. make sure that one barrier is operating. We have this layered defense, basically. The connection between the Great Lakes and the now carp-filled river isn't natural. It was made by engineers 100 years ago in one of the largest civil engineering projects America's ever seen. That's right. We actually reversed the Chicago River. For those of you who don't know, <clears throat> Long time ago, uh, the river flowed into the Great Lake. Now it flows out. The entire flow of the smaller Chicago River was reversed in order to flush sewage and wastewater out of the area. So in theory, that connection could be closed again, back to how it was in the 19th century. But that would involve re-engineering most of Chicago's big wastewater systems and flood defences, and it would cut off what's now a major route for shipping and boating. Closing the link has been suggested, there have been lawsuits about it, but it's not happened. There's millions of dollars worth of goods that traverse just through this area alone. Barge traffic would have to find another way to get to its end goal. Mm. That would often result in more trucks, leading to congestion, leading to more pollution. So although the easiest solution is to close the canal or close a lock, it closes off this vital waterway that keeps goods moving in the Great Lakes. We know there are weaknesses. We still work uh, hard at improving the efficacy of the barriers to continue to look at what voltages are needed to deter fish. Do we have the right millisecond settings? Do we have the right voltage settings? We're even looking at adding things like lights and sound uh, or possibly even CO2 to the barrier defenses. Uh, and so we're continuing to bring that research to bear and provide the best deterrent that we can to keep the invasive carp out of the Great Lakes. So for now, the electric barrier pulses away and back out in the Illinois River where I started, a whole new industry has been set up, catching carp. I actually remember when um, they did a segment on this and they, they brought in a couple of chefs on, hey, you know, you you could help us reduce the carp population by making these wonderful, delicious meals. And I'm not going to lie, it looks delicious. They, they did. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, 
putting uh, carp on the menu, I mean, there's actually a couple things you could do, actually. You know, if, if people really wanted to, if there were some ingenious people, you could turn the carp into fish fertilizer. You know, I'm just I'm just saying you could you could really do something to um, you know, catch them in mass and use them as fertilizer, food, and all sorts of other wonderful things. Hashtag meets back on the menu, boys. We're going carp hunting. And in fact, if you uh, know how to capture carp, type, type, type in the comment section below and let us know. If this is the kind of content you guys like us to check out here on our YouTube channel, we do, we would like your feedback. So that way uh, we can uh, know more about it. But also, um, this has been a fun video. Uh, it, it hits close to home. Because it's 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 in my neck of the, neck of the woods. It's in my backyard, even though I'm for all the way from Chicago. But uh, you know, uh, we do have a serious impact on our ecosystems and our communities, and so much more. And my alarm clock is going off too right now. Hold on. There we go. We're keeping that in. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, <laughs> uh, this was a fun, informative video. Tom Scott. Check out his YouTube channel, but also please check out the original video in the description box below because it's the right thing to do, and come on. I, I know all of you will do the right thing and support the original content creators. So um, if this is something you like, again, give us your feedback. And if you are from the Peoria, Peoria area, uh, what else is going on there? Um, can you give us any other additional information that might have been skipped over in this video? Let us know. Until then... Drink water, keep your heads on a swivel. I want all of you to keep on winning and take care. I'm up out of here.